Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are taking a look at Ninjago set number 71773, Kai's Golden Dragon Raider. This is one of the brand new Ninjago crystallized sets just released in August in the United States and other North American territories. And the set itself comes with 624 pieces, retailing for about $90 USD or $89.99 if you wanted to be specific. The set itself includes a large variety of minifigures and a pretty decently sized vehicle for Kai to drive and the vehicle overall it's kind of hard to figure out what exactly it's supposed to be we'll talk more about that later on in the review but i just love how this looks just right off the bat i think it looks unique it packs a punch it makes a statement i wasn't expecting a whole lot from this set but i'm glad to say i was kind of pleasantly surprised by this thing unfortunately it does have one pretty bad flaw which is the price obviously 90 dollars for a piece count of 624 the price is easily the worst thing about this set for sure but of course my goal for today's video is to simply go through this set give my my thoughts on it as casually openly and honestly as possible this is not trying to be a professional lego review not by any means i just want to give my thoughts on this set as i see fit because i bought this set i want to talk about it so let's go ahead and get things started for the front of the box here you have it a pretty solid crystallized box nothing too different from the other crystallized sets nice image of the set itself on the front in terms of the back of the box you do get a look at some of the finer details of the set but at the end of the day it's just a box there's not really anything else that i can say about it all right guys so starting things off with minifigures here we have the first one this is golden kai as he's known officially in this new ninjago crystallized wave and overall this is a very nice representation of a golden kai we've seen golden kais before we've seen kai use the red and gold color scheme before and this guy is probably one of the weakest of the golden and red kais to be honest but he's not that bad he's just kind of repetitive we've seen this color scheme before nothing really too major obviously the print itself shows the fugitive kai suit just with golden armor printed over top of it and that is a really nice shiny reflective golden print right there not really too bad right there i like how that looks quite a bit also in terms of gold things that mask is gold with a red headband we've seen that combination for kai before as well even the same piece done up in the same colors except this one has a symbol printed on the headband not too bad there same one used on the other golden ninja also like the other golden ninja kai has a golden shoulder pad and a golden katana on the back in terms of kai's face print nothing really too major same kai face that we've been seeing for years now since the ninjaga movie and nothing has really changed change regarding Kai's face. He is still the exact same Kai through and through. And in terms of this figure right here, it's not a bad figure. It's just kind of repetitive. I feel like I've seen this one about 10 times already. And this guy is really no different than some of the other golden Kais that we've seen before. Fortunately, Kai is not by himself in this set. In terms of good guys, we have Skylar as well. Newest rendition of Skylar right here. As I'm sure you guys know, Skylar is one of my personal favorite Ninjago characters. And I think this new version of Skylar is pretty great. No ninja mask, but she does use her glorious red pony ponytail piece returning from ninjago hunted and other things not too bad there that face print is also really cool i love the war paint on her face i think that looks awesome very much skylar-esque with those eyebrows as she should look like skylar this is skylar and she does have an alternate face really quick just taking a look at that alternate face really quick it's a little bit more of a happy face no war paint on this one but i kind of prefer the more savage battle ready look for skylar can't really go too wrong with that in terms of her torso print very similar colors to what we've seen before for skylar uh, this nice uh, orangish yellow color and dark red make a return from previous Skylar variants. Also, Skylar uses the ZX shoulder pads in gold. I love how these things have been around for like 10 years and they're still being used to this day. Awesome right there. And also she has a silver katana on her back as well. Can't really go wrong with good weapon storage. Overall, Skylar, love the character, love this new version of Skylar. No leg printing, unfortunately, which is kind of weird in my opinion. You would think that maybe they would give her some type of ninja belt or something but it's fine it's passable at least we're getting a new version of Skylar that's good enough for me she doesn't really need leg printing to stand out I think overall this new version of Skylar is pretty fantastic next up for bad guys we have General Mr. F that is the official name of this guy right here and obviously this is just Mr. E but now he's Mr. F not really sure how that works again the episodes where they explain that uh, that change have not yet aired in English so I can't really talk too much about that but overall I like this figure I think he's really cool Cool. Uh, same torso print used on some of the other uh, Crystal Council generals, so that's not really unique to him. But what is unique to him is that helmet, which has a red visor. Flip that up, you can look at his face. Very, very cool. Uh, very Mr. E-esque face right there. It's been a minute since we've seen Mr. E or 
Mr. F now in the Ninjago sets, and I'm glad to see his return here. For a weapon, Mr. F here has the Shuriken's of Ice on a crystallized sword thing, same one used on some of the other generals as well, except their golden weapons actually plugged into the thing. His do not, his just kind of sit there and you can attach the shurikens to the side, I guess. That's good enough. It's better than nothing, right? They don't really work on this crystallized blade. That is more so just for the other weapons. But I think overall giving Mr. F here the shurikens is a pretty good idea. Makes sense to me as he and Zane are kind of enemies. And overall, I like this figure. Not really anything too special, but it is cool to get Mr. E or Mr. F, whatever you want to call him, back again in the Ninjago sets. So I can't really complain too much about that. I like this guy overall. Also, in terms of bad guys, we have a Vengestone Brute right here. He is holding a crystal sword weapon. And I've talked to death about these guys before. I think they're awesome. I like their colors, their printing, their new head mold. I think they're pretty cool overall. Again, though, we've already talked about these guys in great detail. So if you wanted to hear more of my specific thoughts on these guys, check out some of my earlier crystallized reviews. Because honestly, I've talked about these guys quite a bit on this channel already, and my opinions haven't really changed. The set also gives you a Vengestone Warrior, or actually, correction, it gives you two Vengestone Warriors. Look at that two of the identical figure in one set. They even have the exact same weapons. And yeah, you get two of these guys here. It's good for army building. It's good to create an army of these guys. This set does include uh, three different Vengestone dudes, uh, one brute, two warriors. So there you go, expanding out the army even more. Can't really go wrong with that. And finally, for minifigures, we get Golden Dragon Zane. Figured I would end on this one because it's arguably one of the best figures in this set. And overall, I like these Dragon Ninja. This is the last one that we have to look at in terms of the Dragon Ninja. I've looked at all the rest of them before in other reviews. and. The blue pins on the back actually fit with Zane's color scheme this time, so that's good. No clashing blue against other colors. I like how this guy looks quite a bit. Again, uses that nice icy blue. Uh, gold and white are obviously used here as well. And overall for Zane, he looks pretty uh, chilly this time. I like his wings. Nice blue and gold combo. There you go, a little bit of a better look at that. You also have those usual spikes on the top, not really too bad there. You can also flap the wings, just like the other Dragon Ninja, and you can get these wings into a variety of different poses, depending on how you like to display these guys. Also, in terms of that torso print, really cool, uh, no pun intended there. Nice icy effect going down into the transparent blue legs, Arms are also transparent blue with light blue hands. Not white hands, but light blue. You can see how it contrasts against the white of the torso. Not really sure how to feel about that. Maybe he should have just had white hands, but honestly, it's not too bad. Uh, nice golden armor as well. Same one used as the other dragon ninja. And of course, that helmet, that mask is the same one as well. Just done up in gold and light blue this time, as opposed to any other color. Uh, taking that off really quick will give us a better look at that face. Look at that. That's a nice looking face for Zane. He looks angry. He looks energized. He looks ready to go. And you can tell it's still Zane. I like how you can see his eyebrows through there. You can tell that it's supposed to be Zane. I like how that looks overall. And uh, just bringing back the super awesome dragon ninja hood. That will complete the look. And I think golden dragon Zane is a fantastic looking golden dragon minifigure. And like the other reviews that I've done featuring a dragon ninja, I will bring in a light quick to show you guys how this figure captures and disperses light. Look at that. That is an awesome look right there. Not as great as something like Kai's golden dragon form, but still really cool. I like how those eyes glow a nice uh, icy blue. Looks really nice. Can't really complain about that. Looks pretty good. And with no other side builds or anything else in the set to speak of, let's move on to the actual Golden Dragon Raider itself. And what a raider it is. I'm honestly kind of confused as to what exactly this is supposed to be. Uh, to me, I've always said this as soon as the official pictures got released. I've always said this kind of looks like a beetle. The reason why I say that is because of that head. Yes, this does have a head, or at least I think so. Look at that. Look at that right there and tell me that's not a face. You have the eyes right there, you got the nose, the horn, these horns up here. That is very much a face, or at least I think that's trying to be a face. Is it supposed to be a dragon? It's a weird looking dragon. If it is supposed to be a dragon, I think it is a beetle. And actually there's a bit of separation going on there. What's, what's that all about? Golden dragon raider. Come on now, get in there. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, in terms of what this vehicle is supposed to be, I guess it is a raider according to the actual box itself and the set. This is supposed to be a raider, and I guess what a raider is is kind of just up to interpretation. We've seen ultrasonic raiders before. We've seen jungle raiders and thunder raiders, and this guy, the golden dragon raider, doesn't look anything like those other raiders. The thing is also quite massive. It's a large vehicle. I can't really get the entire thing in frame at one given time unless I turn the thing sideways like that, and even then, some of the upper bits are kind of evading the frame there but overall you can kind of see what you're going for here in terms of a vehicle it rolls really well has four B 
beefy wheels or at least two beefy tires in the back and i think the back wheels are a lot better in terms of how they're constructed as opposed to the front wheels however the front wheels are done this way partially due to the articulation that is present in this thing. The build itself actually has some articulation. Like I said, you kind of saw me doing this earlier in the video, but these front wheels, you can actually spread those if you really want to. They are on clickety clackety ratchet joints over here under there. You can kind of see how those joints work. And I'm not sure why you would need to do this. I mean, it's cer it certainly is a look. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of holding its hands here. It certainly is a look. You can have it like that if you wanted some type of attack mode. The vehicle doesn't really roll really well like this obviously because the tires are not facing forward uh you're just kind of uh having the tires get jetted out to the side there it's kind of bending the whole leg but you do have that option for the legs if you want you can't really move them up and down due to the way that the ratchets are set there's actually two ratchet joints in there and they don't move up they don't move down so the only movement that you get is left and right and that's how far you can spread it out that's how far you can bring it in so pretty easy in terms of how these wheels or at least yeah, wheels, legs, pretty easy to see how they're constructed. You also have some Technic beams back there. And this whole section right here is pretty much just brick built. You have some nice sticker detailing up there. Nice uh, blade pieces. Again, we've already talked about these wheels. You also have some golden texture pieces right there. I like how these look, these are identical when you go from side to side, these are the exact same build, so you're not really missing anything. Again, you can kind of see them together there. Uh, almost looks like the entire vehicle is kind of praying. That's pretty sweet right there. Uh, but overall, yeah, not too bad in terms of its front legs, I guess. I really don't know what you would call these. Appendages? Legs? They have some exhaust ports right there. I think that looks awesome. Uh, overall, I'm not, again, construction is very, very weird, but it strangely works. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be, but I do kind of like it in a weird way. We've already kind of taken a look at the face of this guy. Again, to me, he looks like a beetle. I don't know if that's just me or if that's anybody else, but to me, he kind of looks like a beetle. You can actually take the entire cockpit and pull it forward like that. And now you actually get to reveal the two seats in there. And yes, there are two seats, one right there, one right there. And those two seats are actually meant for Kai and Skylar. Skylar here, if I can get her into a sitting position. Skylar here kind of sits in the lower one from what the instructions say, and she basically operates the combat systems of the vehicle. She doesn't drive, she operates the guns, everything else in between. Kai, on the other hand, if we can get Kai in a sitting position as well. Kai right here goes in the back and he actually drives the thing from what I can figure out. The reason why I say Kai drives and not Skylar is because when you close it up, you can only see Kai's head through the actual windscreen. You can kind of see the top of Skylar's head, but Kai is very clearly driving this thing, at least in my opinion he is. But Skylar over there, yeah, she kind of operates the guns, the weaponry, all that kind of good stuff. Because once you actually look in there from Skylar's perspective, not sure if I can pull that off on camera, you can kind of see it in there. There is a sticker, there we go, with a targeting system on it. And that of course shows Mr. F. I guess they're targeting Mr. F. Makes sense. He comes in this set. And yeah, Skylar lines up with that. Kai lines up with the actual windscreen. Therefore, Kai is driving. Skylar is shooting. Can't really go wrong with that combo right there. And I like how that cockpit looks. Again, the windscreen is rather nice. If I can get that on camera. Again, big clunky vehicle, kind of hard to position sometimes. You have some nice stickers used here. Stickers on the top of the windscreen, stickers on the side. And I just think that adds detail. Kind of shows a lava and fiery texture, especially from that side. You can see some of the lava a detail so that's not too bad i like how the cockpit works overall it's very easy to go ahead and flip this thing up and take your figures in and out and again two seats in there kind of depending on who you want in there you can put again whoever you want in there one in the front one in the back not really like the dragon cruiser where they're both next to each other this is very much a front and back style vehicle much like some other raiders that we've seen before specifically the ultrasonic raider you also have some stickers used right here for the horn a nice resistance symbol right there and stickers are kind of used across the entire build to just add detail and texture and of course much like the other golden dragon vehicles in the same wave this guy has a transformation feature and the transformation feature on this guy makes the vehicle a little bit longer and makes it a little bit more armored up so to speak and here's what you got to do with that first things first you go behind the thing and this entire assembly in the back is admittedly kind of open doesn't really look all that great from the back but there's a reason for that the reason why this is all hollow is because this is all going to be rotated upwards as you can see we have some ratchet joints right there and of course you rotate the entire thing up you grab it from the back like this and clickety clackety rotate it up like that and there you go now you have a more flatter 
profile, a flat profile for this guy. Next, what you do is you come around to the back and you can actually turn this thing back here. Or what I like to do in this scenario is grab it from the front and like this and rotate it all forward like that. And there you go. Now you have the guns facing forward and then you have this thing that you're supposed to flip out. And there you go. Now this is essentially the attack mode. And that doesn't look too bad right there. Kind of flat, very low to the ground, honestly. And if you wanted to, you could even go ahead and do the attack mode with the back upwards. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's the official way that you're supposed to do the attack mode like that. I just kind of like to leave it like this all the time. I'm not a huge fan of the low to the ground profile, but that makes a little bit more sense for attack mode because the guns are facing forward and those guns are pretty nice. Again, these pieces just kind of rotate. They are connected. So they rotate all together as one unit. And again, you can access that rotation feature by going to the back and uh, just using this little black nub here. And once you turn that, they will uh, rotate. You got to turn it this way. There we go. You can kind of see how that works. Again, kind of hard to do that though. I find that it's actually easier to just grab the guns and rotate it like that because they're all connected either way. They're all going to turn once one thing turns. And I like the guns. These nice uh, orange and gold blade pieces are used here. These have been used in other sets, just not really in this specific color, obviously. And of course, you do have some missiles up in there. Same deal on the other side. And if you really wanted to, you can uh, push down on the little tails back here, which are actually hidden by this large red disc. I really like how that looks. And all you got to do is go ahead and push them in and they will go flying off and I'm never going to find that again. It's off. It's somewhere else. It's off to another dimension, so to speak. And yeah, in terms of the attack mode, I don't mind this too much. Um, again, the guns kind of face forward. You can roll those back if you really want to, but also when you're in attack mode, usually what you'd want to do is you want to come back here and flip up this piece, this whole assembly right back here. All you gotta do is pull it up like that. And there you go, because in there, there's actually a little drone that detaches from the vehicle, just kind of clips in there like so. And in terms of this little drone, it's not too bad. All you got to do is flip out the wings and there you go. You have yourself a nice little flying drone to help out Kai and Skylar. Maybe it's a recon drone. Looks like maybe it has some guns on the front. Uh, you could see all of these as barrels. Maybe these two are cameras. These are barrels. I'm not sure personally. You also have a sticker right there used for detail. And again, to fold that up, all you got to do is fold up the wings and it will plug into the back of the vehicle through the clip right there. You can kind of see what that looks like, that whole mechanism inside. And again, that turning it's on a gear function. You can see how the gears work. So that's pretty enjoyable. And like I said, the drone here kind of covers it up. So all you got to do is plug it in there. There you go. Fold that down, fold that up. And there you go. Drone is tucked away. And if you really wanted to exit attack mode, roll back the wings, the guns or whatever you want to call them. And there you go. Now you have Kai's Dragon Raider as a normal thing. And again, depending on what you want to do, you can also adjust this, this whole assembly. If you're a fan of the more flatter look, go for that. Looks more like it's maybe a speed mode. I just kind of like to have it look like how it did in the show. So I like to have it be a little bit more taller. And to me, that is the best look for this guy right there. Like I said, though, doing this does kind of leave that back really open. And that's not the most beautiful thing to look at. That's actually a pretty hideous looking gap. You do have some katanas back there. So weapon storage galore. That's always nice to see. And like I said, it just depends on what you want to do. If you don't mind having the large open back, you can always have it be lower to the ground. I personally, though, like how this looks overall uh, jacked up like this. So I don't mind the open back per se. It's part of the transformation feature and it doesn't bother me too much. And also the process of handling this thing, moving it around is actually easier due to that gap. You might have seen me throughout the review grabbing it like this and trying to turn it around. That is something that you can do, especially for the younger fans that want to play with this thing. Grab it from back here, kind of like a handle and roll it around like that. Otherwise, you can always just, you know, push it back and forth. That works too, whatever you want. And overall, I think we've talked about everything on this vehicle, everything that I want to talk about. I think we have talked about. It's awesome in terms of its colors, the red, the black, the gold, the transparent orange. Can't really go wrong with that color scheme. You also have yourself an awesome transformation feature that works depending on what you want to do. This set gives you many different options. And overall, stickers add detail. Nothing really to complain about there. The only thing that I think is holding this guy back is the price. This guy is way too expensive, but honestly, that is the only bad thing that I can say about this set. Overall, again, awesome minifigure selection. A decent, unique vehicle that's fun to handle, fun to pose, and fun to explore with. And I can't really say too much else about this guy that I haven't said already. I think for the most part, Kai's Golden Dragon Raider right here is a lot of fun. Before we wrap up the review, here we have some of the leftover parts. Not really too bad of a selection right there. And of course, here we 
we have the instruction manual, pretty bland still, but I still don't really care all that much. So to wrap up my thoughts on Kai's Golden Dragon Raider, yeah, the price is the worst thing about this set for sure. $90 for 624 pieces, that is ridiculous. That is too high of a price in my opinion, easily one of the worst deals that Ninjago sets have seen in quite a long time, which is quite a shame because the set itself is unexpectedly fun to play with and fun to pose and actually handle. In fact, this is probably the most fun set of the entire wave, just to roll around, handle, pose, display. This set is unexpectedly really fun, but unfortunately that price to get that fun is just way too high. Honestly, I kind of regret buying this set immediately. I have a feeling that once the set goes on sale after it's been on the market for a while, maybe that price will be a little bit better. I mean, sure you do get some exclusive minifigures. In fact, Mr. F, Golden Dragon, Zane, and Skylar are only available in this set right here. So if you really wanted to get those guys for your collection, I just wish the price was better because honestly, that's really the only bad thing that I can find about this set. Overall, I love this set. It's a lot of fun. Would recommend it if you guys can afford it, but maybe you should try to get it when it goes on sale because again, that $90 price point is pretty ridiculous. But of course, with that being said, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. Kai's Golden Dragon Raider. What a pleasant surprise. Feel free to leave all your thoughts down below in the comments regarding this set. Do you have this set? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Or if you don't have this set, what do you think about it just from this review? And of course, feel free to let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the review as well. With that being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching and thank you all very much for tuning into all of these Ninjago Crystallized set reviews. With this one out of the way, I am done reviewing Ninjago Crystallized sets as of this moment in time. I don't plan on buying the Golden Ultra Dragon or reviewing that, so apologies if you guys were expecting a review for that. Not going to happen, so this might be the last review that you see from me for a very long time, but I hope it was a good one and I hope it was enjoyable. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys again in the next video. Peace.